Hey, hey developers, a lot of you guys have been asking about Reactivity Transform. I did a video recently on it, so I wanted to have a follow-up video on that and talk a little bit more about it. So one thing a lot of people were asking me is I got a lot of comments on, should I actually use this Reactivity Transform? Or should I use this dollar sign? Does this make sense? So I thought I would address these comments and talk a little bit more about it. And first I wanna say, I actually reached out to Evan Yu after I uploaded this video and we had an hour long conversation talking all about the Vue ecosystem. We talked about every reactivity transform. So I wanna share that with you right now. So for the reactivity transform, he basically said that this is an experimental feature. It needs a little bit more time to cook and that it's really not for everyone and he would not recommend it for using it in production and I agree. When I created this video, I thought it was a really cool feature and I didn't realize that it isn't quite nuanced. It's not quite ready yet and it can be confusing. So let's just jump into some of the comments and uh, I'll answer them for you. Before we jump back into the video, I just wanna say I'm actually doing a conference talk at Vue.js Nation. It's the largest 100% free Vue.js event brought to you by Vue School. It's happening on the 25th and 26th of January. I'm gonna put a link in the conference below so you can check it out. So they're gonna be going over all sorts of different topics, Quasar, Vitify 3, Nux 3, V, Vue.js, TypeScript, Vue Use, and so much more. And they have some amazing speakers. I will be one of them. I'm doing a lightning talk. And also I wanna kind of give a quick giveaway. If you're watching right now, leave in the comments what you like and dislike about Vue. I will randomly pick somebody to get a copy of the Nuxt 3 course. Thank you for watching. Make sure you watch all the way to the end of this video and then leave a comment below for you for your chance to win. Thanks. So if you've forgotten, uh, Reactivity Transform is this new experimental feature. You have to opt into it. You have to add a couple of extra configurations to turn it on, but it does things like this. So like this ref here, you could put dollar sign ref and that way you don't necessarily have to uh, import ref in and you have to, don't have to use dot value. So you can see here in the playground, this let count equals ref. Uh, you have its increment and it works as you expect it. I think this is a pretty neat API, but I could see how if you're not used to these macro level APIs, macro being that it's you don't have to import these things in, they're just kind of like built in to the to view in the compiler, that it's, it's a, can be a little confusing. And then it goes on and there's actually ones for ref, computed shallow ref, and you can even destructure it, which can be a little confusing. And there's even a double dollar sign too, like if you're dealing with uh, composables. So here are a couple of the comments that I received from this video and I'll go through them. So this one from uh, Todd Pale Channel. I think the simplest way to use a reactivity is just to use ref as you've shown in the second example. Yes, you need to deal with dot value, but it's a fact, it's not a big problem. It just depends on the preferences. Yeah, for certainly, like if you are brand new to view, uh, I would say don't, don't use these this reactivity transform. It's gonna be confusing to you. Use the ref and reactive, which are the way to, tra to take variables and make them reactive in view if you're using this composition API. Uh, that's another thing I talked to Evan. You, um, you're definitely having people that really love the options API and there's people that love the composition API, but if you're using script setup, you're definitely going to be using the composition API and this is where you're gonna be using ref and reactive. And it just really depends on your preferences. Like there's no right answer here. Some people really love the options API and some people really love the composition API. I think moving forward, if you're a Vue 3 developer, it's worthwhile to learn the composition API and to move everything over to it. I think it just makes a little more sense, but it's not right for everyone. Sometimes options API is better. And we're gonna see some new things coming up from Vue in the future. Uh, and I think you're gonna notice that those work really well with the Composition API. So another thing is, thank you for your showcase, Eric. I prefer using ref and shallow ref and always had dot value because less compiler magic usually leads to a better code in my opinion. But the Vue team definitely does a great job introducing convenience features for a simpler use case. For libraries, I would stay away from using such features as, until they're polished enough. I think that's a, a really good comment because it is, that's the Vue team I've noticed that they're creating these really cool new features and they are, they do make things more convenient, but they're kind of more like experiments they're putting out there. Like these things aren't necessarily for everyone and you don't have to use them. And it's, 
And some people really don't like that compiler magic. You don't know what's happening. It's doing things underneath, uh, underneath the scenes, uh, underneath the blanket, underneath the fold, <laughs> however you want to put it. And you don't really know what's happening. So that's kind of these compiler macros aren't aren't exactly perfect for everyone. And I, I kind of like them, but I can understand a lot of people don't. And let's let's take a look at a couple more comments. This is from Dr. FC Ozapata. I think it's a cool way to do things in Vue, but reactivity transform is still an experimental feature of Vue 3. So it's a risky to use it in production. If it, it would be nice if the Vue team made it permanent, but we don't know what will really happen. Cool things, thanks for sharing it. Blessings for Venezuela. Yeah, exactly. This is something that I kind of started the this video on is this is an experimental feature. It still needs more time to bake. Um, from talking to Evan, he made that clear to me and, and he mentioned that in his yearly review that he did a few uh, last month. So take that with what it's worth. If you want to use this feature, kind of be cutting and bleeding edge, you could. it'll probably break and probably change in the future. So just keep that in mind. I never had a problem with adding the dot value to manipulate the rest value. These compile time macros look cool, but they add some magic that doesn't read as well as just using the API or ref, especially the dollar dollar sign syntax, super weird for me. That's uh, something that many people left comments on. They really hate that double dollar sign syntax, and especially the kind of the use case of taking something like from a composable and then bringing it back. I think there's better ways to doing that, and I think the view team has already thought of some other ways. So that may not be everything. Uh, may not be a big deal to you. I know with dot value, if you're using VS Code and you're using the latest Volar plugin, it actually kind of auto completes the dot value for you. I still don't love it. I don't really like like it. It's just a very minor inconvenience, all things considered. There's a lot bigger things when you're creating an app than that, but but I can understand like it's not that big of a deal and doesn't really bother people. Here's from Sam. Great explanation and examples, Eric. You're a natural teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Well, so I can see the benefits of dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign. From a readability perspective, I find it very unintuitive and confusing. More like syntactic salt than syntactic sugar. <laughs> I've never heard that syntactic salt. But he is right that like if you're a brand new person, like what does dollar sign mean? It's not very intuitive. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, if you and I can definitely see that perspective. Even if you are not a beginner and you're and you're like me and you've done a lot of view development, this may not be the greatest syntax. Here's from Kirk. View in general suffers from being insufficiently opinionated. Have ref plus reactive plus reactivity transform adds obscure difficult to reason for, about syntax. To what end? Save a few characters. All the dollar sign dollar sign stuff makes it clear that this doesn't even abstract anything away from you. You still have to be very careful not to break reactivity. God forbid different developers mix the dollar sign and ref style with the code base. Pick a best practice, use only ref available. Be explicit about dot value since JS reactivity is always a leaky abstraction, even especially with reactivity transform. This is interesting because there, I think frameworks don't have to necessarily be a super opinionated on things. Uh, I think that's the beauty of frameworks as they evolve and change from one version to the other. They can allow users to do things different ways. React has done this forever. React went from a class-based system to more of a uh, functional-based system with uh, functions. So, and same thing with Vue 2, which went from options API, went to more of this composition API, you still can do it the to both ways. Like they didn't take things away, you know? And I think that's a good thing. And if this is a comment I made recently about the JavaScript survey that was just released for 2022, as you can notice most of the major frameworks, Vue, Angular, Svelte, have all like dropped a little bit in interest and popularity and satisfaction from 2021 to 2022. And I really think that is because not every, as these frameworks keep evolving and changing, the, you're going to get more and more people in the ecosystem and people are not going to like change. They're not going to like things, how it changed from one version to the other. And it's going to be less opinionated because there's going to be more than one way to do it. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Now there could be a point where there's just too many ways to do it and people get really confused. There's also a lot of discussions in like the React community of like use effect is really, really uh, a way to do things. And of course in Vue, 
you don't have that similar issue. You don't have like a use effect for view. But what I'm trying to get at is that I think this is natural. I think there's a balance between being not having any opinions and being too opinionated. I think Vue has a good balance between the two. So I don't necessarily agree with the first statement, but I do understand like the dollar sign dollar sign is definitely confusing for developers. And I think you'll, we'll see that it's gonna be changing. Now, so I, I kind of put in here a bunch of comments that all had the same thing, but very complex. I would say Svelte uses smarter syntax. Uh, Svelte is great, but you know, Vue is, isn't trying to be like Svelte. Vue has its own idioms and its own uh, way of doing things. And it has some silver similarities as well, but I don't, I don't know. This is not the same. A uh, hell of a lot more confusing with dollar sign than using dot value. I still think this dollar sign feature will make who doesn't understand React to feel more confused. Great video, but dollar sign, dollar sign, and two ref definitely, it's a mess. I hear you. So to that point, it's not, it's definitely experimental. I think it's going to change. I would not recommend it using in production, but if you want to be cutting bleeding edge and try it out, you know, lock a certain version of Vue, make sure if you do minor updates to your Vue version that you might have to refactor this out. But for now, this is definitely needs more time to bake. And then the last thing, I think this kind of sums it up well, the dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, isn't it odd, isn't it? It looks like jQuery, if you want to do, if you want to do this, you have to use dollar sign, dollar sign. If you want to do that, please use dollar sign. Oh, I think it's not pretty, Pretty good feature. The Vue core team must think how to simplify the framework view instead of make it more complicated. Vue must be predictable, easy to learn and understand. I guess understandable. In this framework, too many ways how to create reactive variables is useless and bother other developers. One developer likes ref, other reactive and other dollar sign ref. What in the heck? So uh, this kind of goes back to like, do how many ways does the Vue ecosystem want you to be able to create something? Uh, we have ref, we have reactive, we have this now dollar sign, we have options API, we have composition API. And I feel like maybe with this, with this change, with the dollar sign, I've reading all the comments, it's definitely not maybe perfect. It's not maybe the right direction. I think it has, needs more time to bake a little bit, for example. But I think overall having more choices is good. And then having opinions on how you wanna do that is, is what you're gonna to have to do as a software developer. So if you pick up Vue, you need to make those choices. Do I use the options API? Do I use the composition API? Do I use ref or reactive? Or do I use this dollar sign? And I feel like if you go to the official documentation, they've kind of made some opinions on that. Like they obviously say with a big disclaimer that this dollar sign reactivity transform is experimental. So you probably shouldn't be using it. Most of the examples I've noticed use ref in a lot of different places, but you know I think reactive is really simple to use too. And I don't think it's that big of a deal picking one between the other. I actually have some more thoughts on that. Maybe I can do a whole video, another video on it, but still, I, I think you, it's, I think I, I really like the way the view ecosystem has, it doesn't give you a, an opinion on every little thing that it has to be done this way. It lets you, has some same defaults. If you want to start off with Vue 3, I would recommend using Composition API. Use Pinya. Probably use Ref most places or Reactive. I don't even think it matters that much. Uh, so, but if you want to break out of it, you can change out of it. You can use something like XState instead of Pinya, or you can go back to Vuex if you really wanted to. You can use these dollar sign, dollar sign compile macros. So that's kind of the beauty of it. Uh, I've been talking for a while, maybe a little bit of a ramble, but let me know your thoughts and comments below. I really appreciate it. Uh, also, I'm gonna give a plug for myself. You can go to my Twitter at EricCH, that's E-R-I-K-C-H, and follow me there. And there's a lot of conversations going on about these type of things. Thanks.